Hey, it's Chris. Luigi Games. Let's do this. I don't want to say I was right for once. But it happened. Once. If you missed it, I didn't really cover it on any other video, but my reaction to the Simon reveal of Marvel Zombie Side-esque. I told you that they were going to have a different spin on things. I even think I suggested that it might have been reverse. And that's what it is. So I get one I told you so per year, and I guess that's this one of 2021. It's a good thing 2021 is almost over, because otherwise you might have to deal with me more when that happens. Because clearly, if you're paying attention to the other video from last week, the upcoming uh, campaign video with the over-unders, I might be going 1 for 5 or 0 oh for 5 this week on that one too. So... <laughs> That's all I got. Uh, otherwise, the Simon video, 30 to 21, uh, went up this week. And uh, another one will be going up next week, uh, 20 through 11. I, I will also have, finally, my Vagrant Song review going up next week. As well as, hopefully, Pathfinder Arena review. Impressions. Impressions. As well as Harakiri, which is launching next week as well. So... Going to have a lot on that side of things. So, if you feel so inclined to support me and check those out, if they fit your interest at all, be on the lookout. As always, that's all I got. Now, we're going to start this week, though, with, I think, the most influential, the most interesting game to me that launched this past week. That... I don't think anyone else is going to cover. So, intrigued? Peaked? You want to know what it is? And I'm going to put my money where my mouth is on this one too, I think. So, let's take a look. If you are not familiar with Gavin Birnbaum, he does a couple Kickstarters a year. He hand makes wooden games out of the UK. Hand makes them. They're expensive. They're too expensive in theory, for what they are. At the same time, this is Karoo. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm probably not, because you guys know me at this point that I mispronounce everything. What is Legion of Games known for? Mispronouncing stuff all the time on his channel. This is, this is five years since the original came out. I picked up one of these on the Board Game Geek secondary market for like $90. Probably about three years ago. I have only seen one other one come up since. So what is this game? Well, if you're familiar at all with bocce ball, the outdoor sport, if you will, you toss the white ball and then you have a colored ball for your team or your teams and you try to get your colored balls nearest to that white ball, which is X distance away because you just chucked the white one and now you're just trying to chuck your colored ones next to it. That is the concept of Karoo in a nutshell. There's nothing else on the page. That's all you need to know. Except you have these little squares. I think in my case, they're little wooden cubes is what they are, actually. And you have a bouncy ball in the center. And you have these little wooden flippers that you just bonk. And it flips into there. First one to five points wins. You can even get like three points if you knock the bouncy ball completely out. This is the most fun dexterity game that I have. I have played it with my three four-year-olds when they were that age. And we can still play it now because this actually requires a tremendous amount of skill. And even then, you're not going to do well. And it's just like some of those dexterity games where, you know, it's just chaotic fun in it really just works now there's only 30 people backing it right now well 29 because i haven't actually backed it yet but i have a copy like i want to get i'm probably going to get a second copy because this is one of those games where i could really see myself doing it now the question is do i need a what is that 20 dollars difference between a regular version and a walnut and ash version probably not um there you go that's all you need to know Th this this game is great this game is absolutely great i cannot recommend it enough uh, again, it's handmade. It's going to be what it's going to be. He'll get it to you in a couple months. I cannot comment on this enough. I talk about all of his games, but this is the one I'm most in love with that got me 
uh, interested and knowledgeable about his other ones. So I wanted to give that the prime slot at the beginning of this video because I think it's that good. That should tell you something. I have a copy upstairs. It's never going to leave my collection, period. Next. The other big one this week, Pathfinder Arena. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I have a copy of it sitting upstairs. I'm going to do a, a video. I'm probably going to do a little bit of an impressions and a should you back all in one. It's sort of an interesting uh, tale. We're going to see um, by the time this video launches what this did, but... I have mixed feelings right now on the project itself from a purely, we're going to look at the project from a value standpoint. They had a 24 hour early bird. Now, if you're not familiar with Pathfinder, Pathfinder is the other alternative to D&D on the tabletop scene as one of the two big ist out there. And Pathfinder now, what they've done here is this is more, and I heard the term being thrown around the community before this as a skirmish game. It's not really a skirmish game now having a hands-on experience with it. You may think it's a skirmish game, but really it's a chaotic, controlled dungeon crawl with moving parts. And I say moving parts because literally the parts move. You're rotating squares that you're on and you're sliding them across the board. And the monsters themselves stay in the same place. And that's the different part that we're not used to. Because it's going to be more about manipulation of the board itself and your character not being able to go in certain directions because walls are facing the wrong way and you have to rotate the tile uh, via your actions and you're only upgrading between rounds as the monsters get stronger. And it's just an interesting thing because you're also allocating your typical stats for a tabletop RPG in between turns so it allows you more customization as you go on a turn-by-turn -turn basis. Whereas, you know, most dungeon callers, when you make a choice to upgrade a stat or something, you are stuck with it. Now, my biggest concern is that 24-hour early bird that I mentioned, because it's also very expensive for what this is. $113 is just going to get you the core. $158 was this. $186 is this. Now, again, why am I concerned about that? Because the Master Pledge, $186 for all these expansions. The early bird was $169. That's $17 difference. That's a big early bird difference, and you get a free young miniature black dragon. For day one backers. So again, $158 and $158. So that's none isn't any different there. But the other one is, you know, a lot more. So if you're going to get it all, it was definitely worth the day one. And I don't know. With these games lately, uh, you never know what's going to get picked up at retail in terms of the expansions. So people are going FOMO-ish on the collector side of things. Now, here's the other concern. And they've got a bunch of stretch goals. And I'm going to talk more about this on my other video about what I think of these stretch goals. But I'll give you a full disclaimer right now. I think these stretch goals address some of the concerns I have with the game itself. So the stretch goals that they're putting in there are very positive from that side of things. I like the stretch goals that they're utilizing and throwing in there. Um, the other thing that you need to know is down here with these expansions. These expansions are expensive. Hopefully my video here will make it uh, on the page there, but as, as the trend lately is is not um, as, as positive on that side of things. Uh, so here you go with the expansions. Uh, with this expansion, you're getting four monsters for essentially just over $40. Again, the tiers of having options at the different tiers gives a lot of replayability. So I like that. And it actually does matter. So I'm looking at that. And that's a really good one. Two heroes for 25 bucks. Okay. And another monsters expansion there. So you have two monsters expansions essentially there. Although this one has a one character sheet as well too. It says uh, dragon expansion. I believe that's the young black one. I mean, if that's the young black one that's included a $20 you know, again, if you got the master pledge, you're essentially like, what is that like, like 35 euros? That's insane. Traps. I don't know anything about traps. Uh, they weren't included in the copy that I have. I just have a basic, uh, really easy setup scenario. Here's the variable nature of the stats that you're putting down with the abilities that you're upgrading between. Uh, the monsters take turns in between you. You move the board around like that. And then you can attack and combat is what it is. You're leveling up between rounds. It gives you an example of the couple of the areas and the fighters. So, I mean, value-wise, that's a little tough to process. And I think what's going to be interesting is when you pull over kick track, and I don't use kick track a lot, but I think in this case, it will um, really emphasize my point is what are day two and beyond going to look like? Because I think really 
Uh, I don't know how GameTrack does it, but I'm going to assume that most of this is actually these pledges and these backers are all day one still within the 24 hours, although they're on the second day, they just pledged before that 24 hour deadline. So what is day three and beyond going to look like from that side of things? Is it going to stall? I don't know, because I feel like when I logged on this morning, uh, it was at like 137,000 euros. And now it's only at 138,000. And I think it was at 136,000 earlier today. So it's fluctuated. And I'm not sure if that 24 hour early bird, that massive difference potentially is really going to hurt it more than help it because especially that was not really announced widely. I don't think I'm not even sure I knew about the early bird until I actually checked it when I because I knew it was launching because I did the video last week. So I'm sure I'll have more to say on this when my uh, video comes out next week. But um, it's worth noting and it's worth taking a look. It's not straight up skirmish. Um, it is definitely different than other things out there with how they do. They've got some very nice, unique mechanisms, but I'll cover that more in my other video. But all in all, I think you should give it a look if it is of interest to you. But that price point is going to make it very interesting, especially with the expansions all on top and the early bird. So there you go. The next one is Mindbug. Again, Mindbug uh, making me lose uh, the over under again because this thing has been slowly going up. This is at 80,000. And you know what? Uh, the more and more I think about this, having played this and putting that video out that all 300 of you watched, which, uh, you know, honestly is, is great, actually, because this is a very niche game. This is a really good game. This is a really good game. Now, it's definitely not going to be for everybody. And I might just actually end up backing this just to get the little extras because I actually messaged them on here and said, hey, I have the copy because I did a video for you guys. Can I get just the extras? Because uh, what does it say? OK, uh, we'll get back to what is what is there. But um, um, so here, here are the mind bug creations and they're, they're doing more creations, I guess, during the campaign. They're doing more creations. So I guess we're going to see a little bit more there. And that's sort of what I want to get is just the extra, uh, the upgrade pack, the new creations. And uh, they said that I could if I just want to do like the $1 pledge and then get it later in the pledge manager. So what is this game? So this game is really straightforward, actually. All you're doing is you have these two little mind bug dudes that you put out in front of you right here in the, in the little illustration. You draw your hand and you just play a card or you attack every turn. But these mind bugs, uh, if you use them, you immediately uh, take over the character or the creature that your opponent just played. So you are effectively taking them away uh, and swinging things dramatically. And all of these have different powers and different functions. And the order really matters because you can play cards that only can be blocked by certain cards lower than it. You can play cards that capture other people's cards. You can play cards that when defeated, you know, uh, things happen when they're played, things happen when they attack, things happen. There are a few keywords like sneaky and frenzy. And, you know, like I forget what the equivalent is like for tough, but th th it's just it's very straightforward. And you only have three life points and first one out of life points loses. So you can play a couple games in a half an hour once you do. So uh, that's it. Uh, it, it's a pretty decent price for what it is. Uh, it's a solid game. It's a solid, solid card game for people that like quick duelers. So I, I don't really have anything negative to say about it, except for the fact that it could be really swingy. And if you don't want to have everything overpowered and you want some not swinginess and more strategy, uh, this is not going to be your game. It's definitely highly tactical. And even then, because you don't know what powers other people have, it's a little bit tough to say and how they're going to react. And the nice thing, though, is that you only use about two thirds ish, maybe even slightly less of the deck in each game. So you're constantly coming up with new combos and new sets of cards in your hand and in your collection. And you only even have half the deck because you even split the ones that your opponent has and that you have of the ones that are included. So uh, that's my bug. Check it out. Uh, yeah, I'll probably get in on this with the upgrade pack. Next up, Man vs. Meeple just launched season four of their Kickstarter and they do like a couple of the other ones um they're doing bundles and they're doing promos and surprisingly this is less than 24 hours in but they're only at about seventeen thousand. and i'm sure it'll fund because i mean these things always fund from these big time creators uh all like four or five of them that do it now the interesting thing though and the all-in promo pack is 60 bucks and you only have 130 people doing that because this is the biggest criticism i'm going to say of this campaign it's this whole the, the Simon philosophy, right? The, we're not going to show you all of our cards. We're going to hold back a bunch of promos and excite you or try to gain momentum in the middle. Like, why not just, again, show all your cards? I say this with all of the other campaigns. Uh, Simon, you know, Monster Hunter, show all your cards right away. 
boom there you go this is what the price is going to be this is what you're going to get and this other thing i really am not a big fan of this pick three pick three sounds great it sounds great in theory the game bundles we'll get to that in a minute the problem i have with the pick three is here are all the promos there's 90 of them but many are available not all of them so there are only some that are denoted by this little pick three and that is really irritating and they've included most of the popular ones a, a good the majority of the popular ones but man if you were on the other side of this and you really wanted that i mean like that's really irritating that is really irritating not to be able to get the one or two that you really want because it's not part of the pick three and you know again here's the many more to be revealed i mean come on come on you're one of the biggest channels in the hobby set an example please jeremy howard i know you occasionally watch my channel come on man come on man you know i'm right on this one have all those out there to get go get people excited and build that momentum right from the the beginning of the campaign instead of this you know worrying about dragging things you know uh, keeping things moving along make a shorter campaign put it all out there in the front you know they got these huge bundles that you can get for uh you know basically supporting uh, and some of them are better deals than others in terms of what games you're getting. And, you know, the earliest uh, with some of these like Stroganov, Batoku, and a few things like that, Sleeping Gods, and the Deluxe Imperium. So, I mean, some are definitely better than others from that side of things. But And so those are good. And those are good. I have no problem with those. But again, like some are slightly better than others. Man, Glow has promos? I didn't know that. Sugar Nuts. Okay. Anyway, so uh, at that time you killed me. I think I just pre-ordered that. Uh, oh, no, sorry. All season four promos. I got really worried there. I'm like, what does Glow have for promos? No, you're getting all the promos. So actually, these are actually pretty good deals. Then I take that back. These are actually really good deals um, if you're getting all the promos, if you consider it a full $60 value. But again, I always hesitate to get the whole thing, right? Because I see lists all the time on Facebook and Board Game Geek of people that are like, I have these uh, 37 promos that are left over that nobody wants because we don't really play some of these games, which is fine because, I mean, it's getting it for $60 is definitely better than getting, you know, three of the ones you want plus another three of the ones you want because that's going to cost you 50 to get six instead of 60 for all of them. But again, I mean, that's it is what it is. And, you know, shipping is going to be $10 for the promos. So it's going to cost me 35 for three promos. Okay. Okay. Okay okay i mean i understand i understand i understand but i wonder if those reasons are the reasons it's a little slower of a start again i i don't think it's gonna hurt for being able to fund but uh we'll see where it goes so there you go man versus meeple season four next up altenor secrets the relaunch almost a third of the way here and this is a very interesting i believe one to four player game and they've completely changed the design aesthetic here uh, from the top of the page, even to these images of what was there previously. Uh, you know, so they've totally redone things, which honestly is really refreshing in terms of you, you being able to see what exactly is going on. And you can see how they're going to be rotating these rings of sections of the castle where your I mean, heroes are going to be potentially fighting over things, positions, treasures each other in this game and so I, I like the fact that they're showing it off here this is great in terms of the improvement of what it looks like so i like that side of things now again beginner mode expert mode okay good i mean they're putting there they're, must have taken some criticism back because this is much better setup uh standees uh okay the arena pledge okay it's much better priced miniature only pledge deluxe pledge okay what's the difference between those but okay i mean i'm always a big fan of the standees I know a lot of people aren't. 48 hour early bird, um, exclusive standees, early bird bonus, the print and play of the championship rules. Okay, no idea what that is. 16 hours to go though, so it won't be there by the time you guys watch this. And then the miniatures only. So that standee one is the only one that's time varianted. Okay. Uh, championship, so it's the championship rules get a print and play in the other one. And this just gets miniatures and other relevant stretch goals. It is, you know, something completely different. And again, I have no idea. I have no idea uh, how this works and what it is doing in terms of whether or not you'd like it. Because it, because it's so unique, because it's so different, is it going to be too chaotic? Is it going to be just right? I think it looks really cool. I think it looks really cool. I like the going with standees because I'm one of those few people on Kickstarter that actually does. But... 
I guess the question is, why aren't people liking it now? I mean, it's clearly uh, redone this and it's clearly taken a lot of feedback. You can see the different teams that are going to be going up against. And I guess uh, in the beginner game, I think up at the top, it said that they're relatively the same. But then in the expert mode, there there's asymmetry between these teams. So you're getting a little bit of that. Uh, different strategies. Uh, the one golem exclusive guy, the championship rules here. Or it's an add-on. How to host and play championships. Okay. Okay. I mean, eh. Okay. Because we all, I, I have plenty of time to play my, my championship rounds of, of all my favorite games. Uh, <laughs> speaking more on my side of things. Uh, again, I have no clue how to tell if this is innovative in a good way or innovative uh, in an innovative state way. But I mean, honestly, that looks cool. That looks cool. It's cool to look on the table. And sometimes having that aesthetic value is important. But beyond that, I have no idea. And this is a massive page again. Uh, massive, massive page. So... I don't know. I guess I would question why aren't people funding it at this point? It's not like it's going up against heavy competition right now this week. So it's just something to interesting to need to note. And there you go. Altenor Secrets 1v1 with a rotating board or in 2v2. Check it out. Now I talked about this one as a preview, so I'm going to include it. Uh, Young Kalan Young Kalan Dice. I just thought I would show this off. Uh, I don't really get how to do it exactly. They talk about using it as roll and move games, but it's a cool different set of dice where they say that you're going to be either, uh, what, move a single piece with a sum of the dice or move two, uh, your two pieces according to each die pip. So you can decide which one to use on which piece. And they actually have their own little game, I think, here with this uh, in terms of variations you can use it for and different dice that you can do. So anyway, I thought I'd just give it a quick shout out in case you're looking for something completely different in terms of dice if you guys collect dice because I know there are people that do that. So there you go. Next up, Lawnarchy. Uh, almost 40% of the way checked out. So let's check what we got going on here. Uh, Bombasta Games. Tactical card game for gardening. Does that say gardening lunatics? Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm one of those. Uh, one of those I'm not, descriptors. Uh, four starting cards and then draw the jury cards to form examination board. Okay, so we got a bunch of cards here in the middle. And so it looks like these jury cards actually determine what is going to be scoring at the end of the game, what's going to be most important. And so you're going to be trying to score the most points by growing some gardening, squabbling with your neighbor. A couple of Instagram reviews here. Interesting. Stretch goals, replayability, a little bit of everything. Okay. So, I mean, I, I, I have no idea. I, I think it's an interesting concept, but it the aesthetic doesn't appeal to me. Sort of like... Uh, the aesthetic of this next game, unfortunately. Uh, so I, I want to show it because it's got 3,000 bucks, which is 3,000 more than any Kickstarter I've ran. But there you go, Lonarchy. Steven Rhodes Games, Volume 2. And I guess there's a Steven Rhodes Games Volume 1, obviously. Actually, I scrolled down earlier. I cheated. But it's got 66,000. So this must be of interest to people. It's got some bigger name videos. It's got ProZD down there uh, with a review of one of the games from Volume 1. And it's got three different games for three different types of gamers, which, again, I'm going to shout out because, okay, 20, 40, and 55. So you're going to save five bucks if you get all three, but you're actually going to spend more if you only want one, obviously. But I just, the idea of buying all three and saving just always boggles my mind in that sense. Uh, you get the slipcase if you really want all three. Uh, game 1. Cryptozoology for beginners. And so this is what a card drafting based game uh, where you can see what you're going for and what you need to do to get it. And then you draft and pass. And then you play cards, activate abilities, and apparently uh, take that and mess with your opponents. So there you go. Game one. And then game two here is a dice based ability uh, driven game where you have the ability to manipulate using the dice. Uh, to fuel your way to victory. So you can see down here, uh, power dice gain points equal to one of your die, gain an additional power die. And I mean, that's kind of cool. I kind of like that aesthetic a little bit more. Uh, and then you have game three, which is more of a social deduction party-esque game, four to eight players, hidden information, bluffing and fiendish tricks, hence fiendish right here. So dealing out cards to people, arranging them, describe your cards, and you're trying to get artifacts in order to win the round. Again, I don't have the appeal for any of these. I mean, I don't like the aesthetic and none of the mechanisms. Maybe the dice one. The dice one, maybe. But uh, just not for me, clearly. Uh, they've got a few stretch goals here. I have no idea. Uh, this one is an easy pass. It just has no interest from my standpoint. <laughs> but 
if you are a fan of the first one, if you knew about the first one, because I clearly didn't, uh, definitely check this out because because these are definitely of appeal and they clearly have a following because otherwise you wouldn't be raising $66,000 and almost uh, 1,200 people uh, within the first 48 hours for something like this. So that's that's I give them a lot of kudos. That's impressive. So there you go. Dark Retro Worlds. There you go. Stephen Rhodes. Okay, so let's try this again. I went to somehow a different Twisted Fables game found page. <laughs> And I think it was actually like the backer kit for it or the game found backer. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? This is the Epic collection. It's got $55,000 raised and it's only got six days left. So if you guys want to get in on this, you want to get in on this now, because what the difference is, is this is this is going to be delivering like before Christmas or like around Christmas. That's how soon their turnaround is going, because someone said that this is like leftover from actual previous but at the same time, they're not selling it. Like retail distribution channels are like sold out. So I'm a little bit confused on that, but it's sold a lot of stuff, relatively speaking, and it's really well thought of. And I've been trying to trade cut for a copy since it came out and I have clearly had no luck. So I'm actually, even though you can't see this, I'm actually backing right now for the Epic Collection because, because of what's in the Epic Collection and what's not in the Epic Collection. And we'll talk about that right now because it's already there. Let's just go there. Okay, so the Epic Collection has core expansion expansion upgrade miniatures box one and two it doesn't have a lot of the non-gameplay stuff that the first kickstarter was bloated with at the same time it's not necessarily that much cheaper either because if you go back over to the kickstarter page here it was 75 dollars for the deluxe now i'm assuming uh you're going to be getting the same storage and that sort of thing but you're not going to get maybe the full art foils and the neoprene game mat so i guess i wouldn't mind like a like 75 dollars if i got the neoprene mat but I don't need some of the other stuff because wasn't there, I think there was a higher level. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm completely wrong on this. I am. Sure. We'll go with it. I'm completely wrong. I'm always misremembering things. Uh, Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I'm happy to pay for that price because I know other people were not wanting that for their copy from that side of things. And so I'm happy to get it from that. And I don't need any of the extra play mats. Uh, I don't need the sleeves. I don't need any of that stuff. And the game itself is, I mean, you get all these, uh, princesses, essentially Mulan, Red Riding Hood, Little Mermaid, Alice, uh, all uh, Sleeping Beauty. And they're going head to head deck building, cool powers, different abilities, asymmetry. It's just kind of cool. It reminds me, it reminds me more of like Sakura Arms from level 99 games. Cause I love them too. And none of them have deck building though, in this sense. And so this is slightly different than anything else is out there. And because I'm going to get it so soon, I, the combination of the two, I'm backing this right now. Resource system, moving around back and forth. You can see like exceed. If you're familiar with exceed at all, you're either going to be attacking. You have an upgradable skill system. I mean, it's all out there. There's plenty of information. If you like it, the reviews on it are generally positive. I know it's not everyone's ilk, but I mean, it's definitely mine. And even though my wife hates this, uh, we played exceed the other night and she's like, Oh man, this just isn't quite my game, my type of game, even though like I beat her and she, I had like literally one health point left and I knocked her out and I'm like, that's a shame. Cause this is my type of game. So we're going to have more speaking of that exceed collection that I didn't win. All three of them. I lost, I lost a collection of someone was selling a board game geek, the collection of uh, all of the seventh cross ones all of the Street Fighter ones and all of the Shovel Knight ones. And they just kept on rebidding. And this is a whole nother side tangent on the video. But when people put, I'm going to pick a time in the evening, it really means I'm going to wait until people bid as high up as they can, not knowing when I'm going to stop the auction. So I'm just going to let them keep driving the price up so I make more money. And that's that's what it felt like, at least. I know it's probably not. I'm being cynical because I lost it. I'm being a little bit grouchy just wanted some more exceed i gotta go play blaze blue a lot more anyway but that's a whole nother issue altogether anyway that is twisted fables the epic collection doing great Fifty-five thousand. but i do wonder the game found effect because it's not as many eyes on it i think that's a real thing so i was gonna go and look at some games that are ending soon and i wanted to point this out well, let's go over to board game geek here for a second and this is their hotness and then their crowdfunding ending and so they're in mostly end date order right except which one of these is not like the other right elder scrolls skyrim the adventure game is at the top it ends december 5 oh this one ends in 13 hours this one ends on De november 28th this one the 30th the 30th the 30th the first the first the first the first the first so is board game geek getting paid for this 
I mean, that seems like a no-brainer. I imagine the answer is yes for that. I mean, Board Game Geek front page has become promotion, promotion, promotion more than anything else. Because I don't know if you saw also this, this featured videos. If you pay close enough attention, when you scroll across, look at sponsored, sponsored. If you go all to see all, I mean, they're going to have the same thing. Although on this page, again, you can see the sponsored, sponsored, sponsored. Again, not as many sponsored, sponsored, sponsored. But yeah. So they're even having more of the sponsored stuff uh, across that. And I guess, there you go. It does say promoted. So I guess I didn't notice that. But at the same time, man, Board Game Geek, just everywhere now, <laughs> even there. Side rant. But really, speaking of that, I'm going to have a Skyrim game uh, review or impressions of the campaign should you back very soon, probably uh, a week from now. Uh, because I think it's going to be close to being or closer to ending at that time because uh, they're still changing stuff. There's still new stuff coming out on that side of things. And all of the other big ones are still going for a while. Resurgence is the first. Starfighters is the first. <coughs> is the second. And again, Call to Adventures the third. So we're really going to be talking about stuff next week in terms of updates. Heroes of the Shire. I'm still supposed to be getting a copy of that. Uh, not no idea where that is. Uh, again, Weather Machine doesn't end until the 18th, so nothing big is ending soon. So I don't really have anything to waste your time with today, or to hear me blab on any further about campaigns that you already know enough about. So I'm just gonna leave it there. That's all I got this week. That's all I got. It's a short week. Makes my video editing much much easier. Hopefully you guys liked it. Hopefully people like watching stuff. I hope so. I got to think of something creative to do. I'm just you know messing around nowadays. Um, yeah, I really need to get the new stuff set up too. I'll work on that. I promise. I'm lazy. I'm so lazy when it comes to doing stuff like that. And it's the holiday. It's the holidays. I'll cut myself some slacker. It's the holidays. So we'll, we'll go with it from that side of things. Uh, that's it. That's it. Tune in tomorrow. We'll talk about TV. We'll talk about how badly I messed up on the over unders. And then we'll talk about the upcoming next week for all of the end of the month stuff, which there are a couple, but one got moved as well. So teaser, just a tiny bit. That's all I got. Peace out. Let's do this. Stay classy. I'll see you around.